you can use Digital Write to turn something on or off. In this example, we have the LED blink code. When the Digital Write is high, the LED is getting the full 5 volts from the digital pin, so the LED will turn on. When Digital Write is low, it's getting 0 volts, therefore the LED will be off. Digital Read is very similar to the Digital Write command. In Digital Write, the pin mode of the LED was an output to let the digital pin know that it would be sending current out of the pin. When you want to use Digital Read, the pin mode has to be an input, as it is with a button. When you digital read the button, the button state will either be high or low. When it's high, the pin is reading that 5 volts are coming into the pin, but when it's low, it's reading a value of 0 volts. Analog read can be used to read the values of a sensor. In this case, the sensor has to be hooked up to an analog pin, not a digital pin. The analog read values will go from the range of 0 to 1023. The 0 to 1023 are synonymous with 0 to 5 volts. Finally, we have an example of analog write. With analog write, you're still hooking up to a digital pin. However, you have to use a PWM pin. These pins can modulate how much voltage they use. So instead of using only 0 or 5 volts, it can have a range between 0 to 5 volts. The value that you actually type in will be the value from 0 to 255. 255 is synonymous with 5 volts, and 0 is synonymous with 0 volts. Any other number between 0 to 255 will give you a value of somewhere between 0 and 5 volts, and it's proportional. So here we have a code for an RGB LED. We used pin mode output since we are sending a current out of the digital pin, but instead of simply turning the LED on or off, we're going to give it a value from 0 to 255 to adjust how bright that part of the LED will be. Because it's an RGB LED, each color is hooked up to a different digital pin. I used a random number generator to come up with a value from 0 to 255. You don't have to do a random number, you could just type in the actual value you want. So for example, under analog write red, if you typed in the value 200 instead of the random value, you would get a pretty strong red color from the LED. On the other hand, if you typed in a very small value such as 10, you would get a very, very faint red part of the LED. Combining the different colors gives you more than just the red, the green, and the blue options. You can get purple, yellow, teal, and all sorts of other colors in between. In this example, I'm still using the RGB LED circuit. However, instead of using a random number generator, I decided to set the values of each color, red, green, and blue, myself. I'm using an array, so for example, you can see the R value has four possible options, 100, 50, 0, and then 100 again. The position of these numbers in the array matters, so when you go down to the for loop, each time the analog write goes through the for loop, it will, in sequence, first write the R value of 100, then the R value of 50, then 0, and then 100. Similarly, it'll do the same thing with the green value and the blue value. So the first time the analog write goes through the for loop, only the red and the green parts of the LED are on. The blue is completely off. The second time it goes through, all three are turned on, but the red is very weak. The third time, it's only green and not red or blue, and finally, the last time, it has the red and the blue, but no green. Additionally, I created an array for the time that the LED would be on. The first time it goes through the for loop, the LED is on for one second, second time for half a second, third time for one second, and fourth time for half a second. It will loop through these four colors over and over 